By some estimates, 80% of all processed foods, cereals, baby formulas, canned soups, and more contain at least one GMO, a genetically modified organism. But whether GMOs are safe and whether they should be listed on the label has led to a very big food fight. Our cover story is from Barry Peterson. Dalen Perry's papaya farm on the big island of Hawaii may be a bit off the beaten path, but it's smack in the middle of a worldwide debate about one of life's essentials, the very food we eat. His papayas, like almost all those now grown on the big island, are GMOs, genetically modified organisms. I'm sure their first question is, is it safe? We say, of course. I've <laughs> been eating it. My kids have been eating it for 20 years now. 20 years ago, the Big Island papaya industry had been thriving. Growers were shipping 60 million pounds of papayas a year. But then insects began spreading a devastating virus called ring spot to nearly every papaya tree on the island. In about three years, the trees were dead. Fields were barren. The industry literally wiped out. But a Hawaiian-born plant pathologist, Dennis Gonzalve, then a professor at Cornell University in Ithaca, New York, came to the rescue. So we had a technology that could help uh, develop a virus-resistant papaya. Gonzalve and a team of scientists pulled off a remarkable feat of genetic engineering. They took a DNA strand from the destructive papaya virus and inserted it into the DNA of a papaya seed. Just as with a vaccine for a human, the papayas became immune to ring spot. One of the final field tests was on Dale and Perry's farm in 1997. In these photos, you can see the dead and diseased trees surrounding the healthy, genetically engineered trees. And uh, it grew beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And even to this day, there has been no breakdown of resistance. Today, American farmers grow about 10 different GMO crops, including more than 92% of all corn and soy. Most are engineered to ward off insects or to resist weed-killing herbicides or both. That means farmers can dramatically reduce insecticide use. And when they spray for weeds, the herbicide won't kill their crops. And most of us eat GMOs every day in processed foods like soda, cereal, chips, and cheese. And in November, salmon joined the list. It's genetically engineered to grow faster. And there are more foods in the pipeline, among them a peanut, without the toxin that triggers deadly allergies. Cassavas and bananas, the main source of food for hundreds of millions of Africans that would become immune to diseases now decimating those crops. No, no, GMO. No, no, GMO. So given all that, why are so many people so opposed to GMOs. As a mother and a scientist who's been looking at these issues for some decades, I am increasingly concerned at the ways in which corporations have gained more and more control and influence over our food system. Marsha Ishi Eitemann is a senior scientist at the Pesticide Action Network. Genetically engineered seeds are responsible for an enormous increase in the use of pesticides, primarily herbicides, weed killers. People have a healthy skepticism to corporations telling us that their products are perfectly safe. We've seen that with DDT and tobacco, for example. A lot of the opposition to GMOs is directed at the world's largest seed company, Monsanto. Ishi Eitemann says she is troubled that when farmers buy herbicide-resistant GMO seeds from Monsanto, they are locked into using large quantities of Monsanto-produced herbicide as well. And there's something else. Farmers who buy Monsanto's patented GMO seeds must sign an agreement promising 
but they will use them for only one harvest or be sued. Farmers have done this since the beginning of farming. They raise their crops and they save their seeds and they plant them the next year. So why push farmers not to replant seeds that are patented by Monsanto from this year to next year? We spend a billion and a half dollars a year on research and development, and there needs to be some way of seeing a return on that. Hugh Grant is the CEO of Monsanto. He says if farmers want to take their business elsewhere, they have plenty of options. The grower has very little loyalty. They're looking for the best possible seed that produces the best possible crop. But those crops are getting harder to sell as consumers say they don't want GMOs in their food. I want to say no to GMO and yes to healthy food. We have no idea what potential health complications arise out of eating diets that are rich in GMOs. And some companies are reacting. Chipotle, Hershey, and Whole Foods have or will soon either ban or require the labeling of all GMOs. The big question is, is all this fear justified? Researchers are only just beginning to investigate the myriad of potential adverse health effects like from GMOs. The issue is that we don't have the long-term independent studies to be able to answer these questions fully. And this is the great divide. Polls show 57% of Americans think GMOs are unsafe to eat. But consider this, 88% of scientists say GMOs are safe. And prestigious scientific organizations, among them the American Medical Association, the World Health Organization, and the National Academy of Sciences all say hundreds of peer-reviewed studies confirm GMOs pose no danger to health. We're looking at genes that make the plants tolerant of flooding. We're also interested in drought. Pam Ronald is a plant geneticist at the University of California, Davis. Her husband is a certified organic farmer. Has any study shown, even as much as one person, who's been harmed or died from eating food that was genetically engineered? There's not a single instance of harm to human health or the environment using genetically engineered crops. Ronald points out that farmers have been genetically altering food for thousands of years using techniques like grafting, hybridization, and crossbreeding. Look at corn, for example. This is modern sweet corn. This is the ancient ancestor of modern corn. This corn produces a hundredfold more grain than the ancient ancestor, which is not used anymore. Well, nothing we eat has been engineered by nature. Everything we eat has been genetically altered using human intervention. Still, the vast majority of Americans say GMOs are different and should be clearly labeled. Since the, the foods are not labeled, we have no way to, to really ascertain what are the kinds of impacts that our people are having who are consuming GMOs and those who are not. Americans have a right to know what's in our food and a right to know how it's been grown. And Ishii Eitemann has an unlikely ally, the CEO of Monsanto. We've been for voluntary labeling for, for quite some time. I'm surprised because I would think that if there's one company that didn't want people that have GMO on a label when they walk through a grocery store, it would be Monsanto. If we're going to be transparent with this, we should really open it up. To me, that makes sense. What no one disputes is this. The controversy over GMOs is creating an ever-lengthening approval process in countries around the world. Take vitamin-enriched golden rice, which could help 250 million children who have a sometimes fatal vitamin A deficiency. We absolutely have to have food that's safe. But what's been put into the golden rice is a pigment we should eat every day in carrots. And as we impose additional regulatory hurdles that are not placed on other crops, many children are dying every day. Faced with increasing anti-GMO public opinion, the push to ban them is accelerating in rich countries where there is so much food that obesity is a major health issue. Yet, 
their biggest impact could one day be in the increasingly hungry third world. A lesson not lost on Dennis Gonzalez, the man whose genetic engineering saved Hawaii's papaya all those years ago. We in the United States, we're rich, we have a lot of food, no problem. But a lot of these people in these other countries don't have much food. And, and it, that to me, I think, is really harming the people most in need.